Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. This is a tutorial for how I weave in my ends. So I've done some scrappy socks lately and in doing that I've had a lot of questions about how I weave in my ends for scrappy projects when I'm not using a magic knot. And so for this tutorial you're just going to need a pair of scissors, obviously a project that you need to weave your ends in. It does not have to be scrappy and just a tapestry needle that will work for the size yarn that you're using. I like to use these super small ones when I'm using fingering weight yarn. It makes it easier to go into the backs of the stitches. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna flip this inside out and show you what I've got done so far. So you can see I've already done some of them here and then these are the ones that still need to be completed. And I wanted to show you guys what they look like when it's done and then I'll show you how I do it. Now, I am not saying this is the correct way to weave in your ends. I don't believe there's a correct way or a wrong way. You do the way that works for you. You do how it feels right to you, how you like the look of. Whatever suits you the best, that's what you go with. This is just how I weave in my ends. This is how I've always done it. And I don't know, it works. I've never had any come out. So this is what I stick with. So you can see this is the inside of the sock and you can see where I've woven them in. But on the front of the sock, flip it again here for you. Find the spot here that I can show you. So right here, is where I've woven my ends in and you can't tell on the front at all where they've been woven in. Nothing. But you can see them on the wrong side of your work. So for something like a sock, this is fine. This works, you don't see them at all. So this is how I do it. You're going to find whatever end you're weaving in. I will show you when I do, just stick that right there. When I do socks, let's see if we can zoom in there. And I have where I've changed collars. I give them just a little bit of a tug. Nothing too major. Just pull them just a smidge. And then I do tie one little knot. just closes that gap up there and you will never feel that knot. Now you can see that I have done my color changes on the side of the sock. I did not do it down here at the bottom and if you have done any of my sock patterns you know that the center, the beginning of round at this point after you do the heel flap moves to here in my sock patterns but I I kept, I did that, that's where my beginning of round was, but I still changed collars over here on the side. Just in the same manner that I had been doing, I did 10 rounds. So that's how I did it there so that you will not feel any of this on the bottom of the sock. All right, so to weave in ends, you're going to thread your tapestry needle. Let's do this one here. And the way that I do it is just come to the back of the yarn, the collar that you're using. And then I'm gonna go down the back of about four stitches. So the way that I do it is just come into this stitch. I'm not going completely under, that would be if I went completely under, then you would see that on the front. I don't want this to show in the front. So I'm only going to split the back of that stitch pick up just a little bit of it and do that for about four stitches. Whoops, I yanked it out. There we go, about four stitches. Then I'm going to pull that down through. Then I'm gonna go back up for about the same three or four stitches. And you can see I'm not, again, if I went completely under to the front and picked up that whole loop, you would see that on the front. I don't want that. 
So I'm just splitting that back loop of that stitch for every single one I'm going through. Then I'm gonna go back down. Same thing. I am splitting that stitch. And that's it, you guys. That's all I do. I do it three times. So down through the back, splitting it, not picking up the whole loop of the stitch for three to four stitches, back up for three to four, back down for three to four. That's it. That is all that I do. Snip it right there. I will show you one more time. This end actually has a little knot in it. I'm just gonna snip it off instead of trying to pick that knot out. All right, so I'll show you with this collar right here. And we're gonna go up this way first. And remember, I don't go completely under, like if I went completely under all of them, that's what it would look like. And then you would see that on the front. So I split those stitches. That's why it's, I like to have a smaller needle. They have a little bit of a sharper point. Just makes it easier to split the fingering weight stitches. So you're just splitting that bar on the back and going through three to four stitches. I'm gonna do three on this one. Pull it through. Come back down. And back up. Three to four stitches, three to four times. I think I'll go ahead and do one more right here. And that's it. Just gonna cut that there. I always leave just a little bit there so that they can adjust. You wanna make sure you don't pull them too tight when you're pulling them down through the rows. That's it. That is how I weave in my ends. Like I said, you can see it on the inside, but nobody's going to be looking at the inside, so it doesn't bother me. This is just how I've always done it. Let me know below how you weave in your ends if you do it a different way. I would love to know the different ways that everybody does it.